الحمد لله الحمد لله ورحمته ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك وسلم وقال الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان صدق الله العظيم Dear respected brothers and sisters I just recited the few ayahs of Surah Al-Rahman The surah starts with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started this surah with this specific name. He has 99 names. And out of the 99 names, He chose Ar-Rahman to start this surah. Why? There is a reason for it. Ar-Rahman means the one who is most merciful, the one who has mo most kindness. And when you talk about a Rahman, you are expecting some favors. And everyone knows that in Surah Al Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions His name as His favors upon the human beings. That this is what I have given you. Among so many different blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this surah, the biggest blessing is given in the first ayah Ar Rahman. Allam al Quran. The biggest benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, the biggest favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made is Allam al Quran, that He taught the Quran. Khalaq al Insan, and then He created the Insan. So, this is the biggest favor, teaching of the Quran. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say that I created Insan so that I can teach Him the Quran. In other words, the main purpose of the creation of human beings is so that they can learn the Qur'an. You see? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that as the biggest favor. And if we think into this ayah, if we think about this ayah, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the order. He says, Allam al-Qur'an, then He says, Khalaq al-Insan, then I created the man. But if you look at it, if you look at the practical order, Allah created the insan first and then He taught them the Qur'an. Right? So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the order? And order is very important in the Qur'an because this is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is who is very wise, who is hakim. So His kalam does not have any, any shortcomings. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has changed the order, there is a reason behind it. That He said Allah al-Quran first and then he said Khalaq al-Insan but in practically he created the Insan and then he taught them the Quran. This is to show that the purpose of the creation of the Insan is teaching them the Quran. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the order. And we do the same thing in our daily lives. For example, I want to get the medicine, right? If I have to take the medicine, I, I would say I need medicine, so I need to go to the pharmacy. But when I practically do it, I go to the pharmacy first, and then I get the medicine. Right? So in the same way, you say that I need to go to Chicago. I, that's why I'm buying a ticket. But then you buy the ticket first, and then you should go to Chicago. So anytime we say something, we put our purpose first, and then we tell them the means of getting there. In the same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He says Allam al-Quran khalaq al-insan meaning He told the purpose of the creation of insan that the purpose of creation of insan is so that Allah can teach him the Quran. What is Quran? Quran 
is the final words of wisdom and the guidance to the mankind, right? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings from Adam alayhi salam until the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that the humanity would evolve to a level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can teach them the Qur'an. In the time of Adam alayhi salam, the humanity was not ready to understand the Qur'an. In the time of Adam alayhi salam, the ummah was just like a baby. Yeah. When the baby is born, what does the parent do? They don't teach them the big thick books of medical science. Right? If you want, if somebody has a child and they want them to become a doctor, right? They say, my, the purpose of my child is to make him a doctor. He's, the first year that he is born, the parents are not going to teach him this big thick books of medical science. They're not going to do that. When the baby is born, the first thing the parents are going to worry about, the nutrition. If baby's milk, he's getting the milk all right, if he's drinking all right, if he's getting digestion all right, put a, change his clothes, feed him, change the diaper, clean him, that's it. This is the life of a baby. Right? In the same way, when the humanity came in this world, in the time of Adam, salam, they were not taught any sharia. It, they were, it was very basic. The teachings in the sharia of Adam salam, was how to do agriculture, how to build a house, how to have a family. So that these were the basic teachings in the time of Adam alayhi salam. And then the creation evolved. The time of Shis alayhi salam came. The, the Sharia became a little bit more complex. Then in the time of Nuh alayhi salam, the first fully, full Sharia was given to the mankind. So in the Sharia of Nuh alayhi salam, there was fasting. There was Hajj, there was Salah, there was everything was present in the time of Nuh alayhi salam. Because now this is the age of humanity in which it can understand and it can follow. You know, just like a baby is born, over the time he grows and then he's, you start sending him into the school. Then he gets some responsibilities. So Nuh alayhi salam is the first time the mankind got some responsibilities. And then the time came of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the Musa alayhi salam. In the time of Musa alayhi salam, as if the mankind is at its full strength. So the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam is very strict. The regulations are very hard. If you have some najasat on the piece of cloth, you have to cut it out. You cannot wash it. So the things in the time of Musa, Musa alayhi salam are pretty hard. If somebody stole something, the next day it would be written on their doors that this is the person who stole, right? If somebody kills someone, their name would be nominated. It would be called out. If you want to make a sadaqa, you have to put your, so the thing that you're going to give in sadaqa out in a mountain. And if the fire comes from the heavens and catches it, that means your sadaqa is accepted. So these were the sharia of Musa alayhi salam. Then the sharia of Isa alayhi salam came. And then the final so as if the humanity was fully mature in the time of the Prophet And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw that the humanity is fully matured, then He sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this time. And when He sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in this time, then He sent Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with His final message of the Qur'an. So the Qur'an was the main purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the mankind and He evolved them gradually until they came fully matured in the time of the Prophet sallallahu So the Sharia of the Prophet sallallahu is the most complex and the most complete Sharia. Before Prophet sallallahu you would say bits and pieces here and there. But anyways, so this Qur'an is a mu'jiza. This is the final words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and unlike other scriptures, this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The previous scriptures are not the words of Allah. They are the messages from Allah. Injil is nothing but the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired in the heart of Isa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam said it in his own words. The Torah is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to Musa alayhi salam in a written form. He had the angels written the message in their own ways and then given it to Musa alayhi salam. But Quran is the one which is not only the message of Allah, but it is also the kalamullah. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited. The way you recite Surah Al-Fatiha is exactly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recited Surah Al-Fatiha. 
That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Tilka ayatullahi natluha alayka bilhaq. These are the ayat of Allah. These are the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Natluha alayka bilhaq. That Allah recites. Natlu. Natlu means we recite. Tilawat. We do the tilawat of it. Bilhaq. With the truth. So these are the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are him, which are recited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's amazing. No other books is such that it was recited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is, that's where Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Tabarrak bil Quran. Take the barakah from the Quran. Fa innahu kalamullah. This is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this is a mu'jizah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A scholarly mu'jizah. Scholarly. Ilmi mu'jizah kehte hain isko. A scholarly mu'jizah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Before Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the mu'jizah, the miracles were given to the previous prophets. And miracles were such that they exceeded the intellect and the skill level of the people of that time so that people can understand that this is the Prophet of Allah. Because these are, miracles are like a sign. But in the time of Prophet wasallam, the scholarly mu'jizah was required. Why? Because the prophethood of Rasulullah wasallam is until the day of judgment. So the miracle has to be such that it lasts until the day of the qiyamah. How can you have the prophet, prophet's religion in a time and his mojiza to end by when he leaves the, when he leaves the world? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a mojiza that would last until the day of judgment. And not, not only until the day of judgment, but even after that. In the hashar, Quran would be a mojiza. It would work very miraculously for some people. You know? On the day of judgment, it says that Quran would intercede for the people. On that day, nobody would be able to speak for no one. Nobody would be able to speak for someone except for few things. One of those things would be the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give it a physical form and it would speak for the people and Allah would accept the intercession made by the Quran. So, we have to understand that this is the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. People have written books how this becomes the mojiza until the day of judgment. The biggest mojiza of the Quran is that it took the people to the darkness. When there was darkness of evil, right? People used to bury their girls alive. They used to kill each other for no reason. They used to fight for years and years. They used to bl shed blood for hundreds of years for little things. The Quran was revealed as a sunlight. Quran came as a guidance and it will enlighten the people and took them out of that darkness, right? So this is the mojiz of Quran. At that time, there was no other thing that could guide them except for the Quran. So this was the biggest mojiz. And then, if you look at the preservation of the Quran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Quran, that's another mojiz. Not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also preserved the language of the Quran. You might imagine, there, is, there was so much, so do you think in the time of Prophet ﷺ, there was only one language spoken? There were so many different languages spoken. Today we don't hear about any other language. Only the, Quran, the, the Quranic language is present, that was present in the time of Prophet ﷺ up until now. This language existed like two, three hundred years before the Prophet. And then he came, Quran was revealed, and it got preserved until today's time. The languages that change. After 300, 400, the people who are linguistic experts, they say after 300, 400 years, the languages change. The language we speak today, 400 years from now, it's not going to be spoken. It would be changed. It would be something else. They might still call it English. They still might call it English. Or still might call it Urdu. But it would not be the same words. It would be not be the same style. It would not be the same phrases. Everything is going to change. But it's a miracle of Qur'an that not only Allah preserved the Qur'an, but the language of the Qur'an. It's the same language that was spoken in the time of the Prophet at this time. And then, look at the choice of the words. You know, choice of the words. Fasahat of the Qur'an is amazing. The eloquence of the Qur'an. The words are just right. It's not too much, it's not too less. You see, if I speak too many words in front of you, you're going to be bored. If I speak too little, you'll be confused. You will say, what is he trying to say? I don't understand. Too many is confusing. 
Two less is confusing, too many is boring. But the words of the Quran is just right. So eloquent, so beautifully said that you cannot have any more or any less. It's just perfect. The choice of the word is amazing. And then the usage is amazing. And then it mesmerizes the people. I have a few, there's a lot of examples in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses different words for different situations. For example, In Quran, there is a word which is called Ashad Duhub. In Arabic, there is a word which is called Ishq. One is called Muhabba and one is called Ishq. Muhabba means love, Ishq means extreme love. This is called Ishq. This is a proper Arabic word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not use the word Ishq anywhere in the Quran, but He uses the similar meaning in the Quran. Walladina amanu ashaddu hubba lillah. The people of Iman. They have the extreme love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not say they have the ishq for Allah. No. Why? Because it does not fit the eloquence of the Quran. It does not fit the pronunciation that it has to fit in that place. There are so many different things that are not used in the Quran, but they are proper, uh, proper Arabic words. Right? But still, this is everything about Quran is so amazing. And people who do not have to believe in the Quran, people who doubt Quran, they still say today's time. They say that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made the Qur'an himself. You know, today there is people who are expert in handwriting. No matter how many different ways you write, they can catch. It is the same person's handwriting. There is experts, right? There are linguistic experts. You can speak in different styles. And a linguistic expert would, would, try, would, be, try, would be able to figure out that it is spoken by the same words, same person. These words are spoken from the same person. So, what happens when they look at the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they look at the Quran which was said by Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? How can they not differentiate that these are the two spoken words by two diff different people? One is from Allah subhanahu wa taala and one is from the divine being which is Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right? You can see, you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was afsahul kalam. His words were also very eloquent. But still, the eloquence of Quran far exceeds the eloquence of the hadith. The beauty of the word that is in the Quran far exceeds the beauty of the word which is present in the, in the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how can a person say, even today's linguistic experts can figure out easily, the Quran is Quran, Hadith is Hadith. These are the two different words but spoken by two, two different individuals. It's not possible. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you doubt that this is from Allah, it's not from Allah and it is, not, it is something that Muhammad read for, wrote by himself, then make a Quran like this. It's an open challenge. Those times people were very expert in language. A nine-year-old can read poetry of 90 lines. Right? So... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he's writing it, then you can write it better. But no one was able to write a Quran like this. Actually, people tried. Like people like Abu Jahl, they tried writing the Quran. They wrote Suratul al -feel, Right? Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. When this surah was revealed, he started writing a surah too. He said, al-feel um al-feel. Elephant, what is the elephant? Wa ma adraka mal feel And what do you know what is an elephant? It has a long trunk and it has a tiny little tail. Everybody started laughing. Abu Jahl, what did you make? You think you are going to compare this with the Quran? Quran is the words of the Wahi. And they give you something important, information. And you get your, your surah that you made is giving information about an elephant. It talks about something new that people never knew. And you're talking about an elephant that everybody knows about it. What type of surah is this? So even if people tried, they could not make it. So this is the Quran. Right? And you know, the, the wonders of the Quran, they're never going to end. Not only in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but later on. Everybody, if you have visited Egypt, today they tell, show you the body of the Firaun. They have the mummy of the Firaun preserved. Why? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُنَجِّكَ بِبَدَنِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that today we're going to protect, we're going to protect your body. It's not going to be taken up. It's not going to be decomposed. <coughs> right? Allah said that we'll save وَنُنَجِّكَ بِبَدَنِكَ Your badan, your body would be preserved. In the time, early, in the early times, people could not find the body of Firaun. It was buried somewhere down below. Who knows? 
It was in pretty good depth. Later on, so many hundreds of years later on, people dug and they found the bodies of the Firon. Why? Because they knew there is something in it. Allah says that we have preserved the body of Firon. So where is it? It was not found in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was not found in the time of Sahaba. It was found many, many hundreds of years after, right? But people had trust in Quran that if Allah said we have preserved it, it means it is preserved, right? So many. Things were given in the Quran, so many news were given in the Quran, glad tidings were given in the Quran. This is what's <coughs> gonna happen. You know, the room, the room, the Romans would be conquered. That was a superpower. Nobody believed. But later on, it happened that the Romans were conquered. So these are some of the wonders of the Quran. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, This is La Tanqidu Ajaibuhu. Quran is something that his ajaibat, his wonders are never gonna finish. Even to today's find, it mesmerizes the people, right? You look at the rationality of the Quran. If there is philosophers, if people think that we have advanced in the science, and we have advanced in the philosophy, then the philosophy of the Quran exceeds the philosophy that is present today. Even though it's not the book of philosophy. Even though it's not the book of science. It is not the book of logic, but it exceeds all that is present today. It exceeds the skills and the education of the people. So that me makes you to... It subdues people's mind, make them believe that this is the divine word. This is the word given to Rasulullah This is the final word of Allah's guidance. So there are many wonders of the Quran. But how good is the wonders if all we know is, if all we do is learn about those wonders and listen about these wonders? It's only going to benefit us when we start, we start reading it, understanding it, and practicing it. If we are not reading it, Somebody can tell me that this is a very good, this apple is very sweet. <coughs> apple has so many benefits. When is it going to benefit me? When I start eating it myself. So the Quran is like honey. The Quran is full of benefits. When is it going to help me? When I bring it into my lives. Right? And where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to read the Quran and attach and associate ourselves with the Quran is amazing. Allah does not need anything from us. Allah is ghani. Allah is ghani. And we are the ones who are in need. But still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to read the Quran, associate yourself with the Quran, follow the Quran, etc. etc. <coughs> As if the mother is feeding the baby and giving the food in his mouth and saying it's good for you. It's going to make you healthy. Just try it. Do it. In the same way, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is telling so many benefits of the Quran that if you read the Quran, you want to earn. You know, insan, there is, this is haris. This always wants to make an earning. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you are fond of her earning, then the, what could be a better earning than the Quran? Even if you look at the worldly earnings, people who have the Quran in their hearts, even in this dunya, they don't suffer. They get a lot of the barakah from, the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in this world, even in this today's time. And the time of Ramadan is coming, look how valuable the hufaz are going to be. You will not find even if you try. Right? So th this is the value of hufaz. This is why? Because they have the Quran in their hearts. But in terms of the akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the reward for one kalima is ten rewards. And Rasulullah said, I don't say alif, lam, meme is one word, but alif is one word. Lam is one word and meme is one word. <laughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave the example of alif lam meme. And who knows the meaning of alif lam meme? No one. Allah wa rasulu alam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is promising a huge reward for reciting something that you don't understand. So that means even if you don't understand the Quran, you will be rewarded. By no means I am encouraging people to not understand the Quran. Of course you have to understand the Quran. This is the book of wisdom. How, good, how much good, goodness it's going to bring in your life if you don't understand, if you don't practice it. But even if you don't understand, you read Quran, it's going to bring barakah in your life. You know? People who start their days with the Quran, they see special barakah in their lives. Today we, we become lazy. We don't do it. We think too much that how, how do I bring Quran in our lives? I have, to sp I have to get some time. I have to set aside some time, 30 minutes, and I'm very busy. And when I have time, now I'm too lazy to get up and make wudu, right? Easy way to start your day is to start your day with the Quran. It's easy. How? You don't have to worry about wudu. You don't have to worry about time. In the morning when you get up, what do you do? Take a shower. When you take a shower, 
you put on the clean clothes. Now you're ready to go to work. Before you go to work, in this time, your clothes are clean, right? And you are in the state of wudu. Not only in wudu, you have nice ghusl and everything. You're hungry because you just did your breakfast. Now, before you step out of the house, how hard it is to pick up the Quran and recite a few lines and put it back in. Maybe you can spare a 30 seconds today. So you open the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لا ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه I saw my watch 30 seconds is up I put it put it back in the shelf and leave that's that's it for today easy how hard it is you don't have to go separate from and make wudu you don't have to change your clothes you are in the best attire and best state that is possible tomorrow you're gonna spend a minute maybe the next time you're gonna spend five minutes and ten minutes eventually it would become part of you. And the day that you recite, start your day with one ayah recitation, two ayah recitation, you'll see the barakah throughout your day. And you will be like, it's amazing. It has changed my, the way I, re, I make an earning. You would see the thing happening by, all by itself in your life. People who bring the Quran in their lives, they say, I have heard a few, few people saying, before I used to be too worried about my business. I used to always think about my business. And now that I have started reading the Quran every day, it is as if my business is running all by itself. This is something was, somebody, someone was telling me last month. After I recited Quran every day in my life, I see as if my business is running all by itself. I go to the shop, half of the things is already done. I go to my other store, half of the things are already done. And sometimes I have to just make a phone call, rest of the things are, get, are taken care of. I have no stress right now. It's amazing how Quran, the little bit of Quran can bring barakah in your lives. So, and it's, it's, it's not hard, it's not hard. Just wake up in the morning, with the, before you step out of the house, read a few lines of the Quran and leave, and you will see. And the next day would encourage you more. And the time it takes to recite the Quran would be so precious and so, I mean, so much uh, attractive to you that the next day you will be waiting for the same moment, that when the same time is going to come and I, have to, I will get to open the Quran and read it again. So this is the full of barakah. And at the time of the death, which is the hardest of all the time, when everybody's going to leave. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the Quran is gonna be, was going to come to this person in the form of a human being. And it's going to accompany him in the qabr, when there's no other person to accompany him. It would be the nur in the qabr. And after he's going into the hashar, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Quran would be a nur in the hashar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Quran is going to intercede for this person, and he would not leave him anywhere in his journey until he makes sure that he enters into the Jannah. So this is the Quran. On the Day of Judgment, it comes in the Hadith that the fasting is going to intercede for you. Ya Allah, forgive this person because he stayed hungry and thirsty for me. And then the Quran is going to inter intercede for the same person and say, Ya Allah, I did not even let him sleep in the night. So you, you, please forgive him. So the Allah would, would forgive this person, enter him to the Jannah. And if somebody is... Hafiz, he's, he has memorized the Quran, right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have even more gifts for him in the Jannah. Allah would say, وَرَتِّلْ وَرْتَقِي Recite the Quran slowly as you used to recite. People say, you know, how many people in the masjid? Maybe 60, 70 people. Today I can guarantee you that each one of you can get this blessing. That on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can tell you, each one of you, وَرَتِّلْ وَرْتَقِي Recite and rise. You might argue that how can I become a Hafiz? I have wasted so many years of my life. You don't have to become Hafiz. You have to start. You have to start somewhere and once you start and you start and you are honestly working towards it, on the day of judgment Allah would rise you as a Hafiz. Right? A person who went for Hajj and he passed away in his journey towards Hajj, he was in the state of Ihram. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that on the day of judgment he would, he would rise in the state of ihram saying labbaik and until the day of judgment Allah has appointed an angel in his place who is going to make hajj for him every year. So a person who struggles to become a hafiz to memorize an ayah or two whatever he can on a daily basis and he struggles to become a hafiz even if he does not finish on the day of judgment Allah would rise him as a hafiz and he can get the same benefit Allah would tell him he would, know, he would be having the whole Quran in his heart he would recite and he would rise up in the jannah so each one of you can do it it's all about how seriously you take it if you take it serious enough if the day of judgment is serious for you if the jannah is important to you if you want to get those 
you have to get that respect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and respect in the whole makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing that can give you that respect is the Quran, nothing else. The Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Quran is something that rises the nations in this, in this world, right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to bring the Quran, associate ourselves with the Quran in this world and make the Quran our company in this dunya, in the hereafter, into the Jannah. Wa akhru dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.